एवरीवन वेलकम टू इट्स टुमारो न्यूज एंड यू आर ऑल वेलकम टू आवर अर्थ डे 2024 सेलिब्रेशन as we stand on the edge of the crucial moment in history it is essential to recognize the profound impact of plastic pollution on our environment and each year millions of the tons of the plastic waste find their way into our oceans rivers and landfills wreaking havoc on ecosystems endangering wildlife and threatening human health but today we refuse to mere spectators in this destructive narrative the theme of this year's earth day is planet versus plastic it is with the great honor and privilege that i am here to introduce our esteemed guest mr kai johar with a distinguished career spanning more than 30 years dr johar stands as a paragon of excellence in his field as an professor at department of zoology biomedical technology and human genetics at the school of sciences gujarat university ahmedabad dr johar has demonstrated an unparalleled commitment and has vast research experience in the field of zoology biomedical technology and human genetics Today Dr Johar will dig into the plastics impact on animals revealing the concerned consequences shedding light on the frequently overlooked effects So Dr Johar can we start the interview Yeah please Can I ask you something today Yeah of course I am ready <laughs> What is the plastic pollution and how it originated and what is the current status in the world today Yeah So plastic is a very interesting material uh we have started uh, using plastic from all 1800 and uh, plastic uh, was invented as an alternative to the natural material so being a natural material all these material have some sort of problems so the plastic was developed to overcome this problem and that is basically the reason that plastic you know has found its use in almost each and every aspect of our life <coughs> so what i want to say is that being such a useful material and being developed so that the natural forces doesn't work on it makes it very difficult to biodegrade and that what it is creating a problem right so the inventors of plastic they were already knowing that it would be a very hard to recycle and degrade the plastic mm-hmm. first of all and is been accepted so the if you talk to me about the production of plastic right now so we are producing almost 450 million tons oh really yeah and uh, if you talk if you go back just by few years say 10 years back hmm. it was just 30% of what we are using today so you can make it out that at what extent we are using plastic we have increased using yeah, plastic we are using plastic and we day by day plastic is you know far is finding its way into other aspect of the you know our daily uses uh the problem is its recycling hmm. and uh, around a quarter of plastic you know waste you know that end up you know and it gets mismanaged and that what it creates a problem so the problem i already said that it is it is not a natural material so that's why there is no organism which is known which can completely eliminate the plastic and that's why it is building up and in fact the situation at present is this that there is no place on this earth which is free from plastic you go to poles you go to deep sea you know even in a mariana trench which is the deepest place on the earth mm. there also there is a plastic so this is the extent of the plastic policy 
can you uh, elaborate the some sources of this plastic yeah as i said <laughs> that plastic we are using everywhere so basically we need to you know understand that why the plastic has become such a popular material so it is because of its durability mm. its versatility its very lightweight it has a insulation capacity it is resistant to the corrosion which you will you know find a problem with most of the metals and uh, it is also resistant to many chemicals and also resistant to many weathering and natural conditions so because of this plastic has found its use in various aspects the field which is using the highest amount of plastic is the packaging industry mm. so food beverage pharmaceuticals personal care products household products containers bottles bags wraps whatsoever you see all these packing materials you name it and it's yeah, so yeah that is made yeah. up of plastic another you know field where plastic is used in a huge amount is the construction field earlier we used to have that uh, you know iron pipes hmm. galvanized iron pipes but now it is been replaced by the plastic pipes fittings insulation material roofing siding windows doors flooring everything is of plastic mm -hmm. in automation uh, you know industry automobile industry also you know our cars if you enter inside those dashboards you know bumpers body panels even entire uh, you know car except their engine are made up of plastic dust <coughs> seats are also made up of you know artificial leather that is a kind of plastic only electronics also uses a lot of plastics the electronic housing the casing you know then the connectors cables insulators this is all made up of plastic we are using in textile we are wearing the clothes like terry cotton or uh, you know terrilin nylon these all materials used in the you know uh, you know clothing they are also made up of plastics then medical and healthcare field also lot of things you know that is made up of plastic in agriculture also plastic has found its use beginning from the pipes water supply pipes to the you know a uh, lot of material is being used then consumer products of course which we use you know on a daily basis like you know beginning from toys to furniture to lot of different things they are made up of plastic so plastic is there everywhere yes uh can you tell us some interesting facts of the plastic yeah plastic pollution in fact so uh every year you know we are dumping 8 to 10 million tons of plastic in our oceans oceans only yeah. and others <laughs> <laughs> that big number plastic can take you know the biggest problem that plastic will take probably hundreds to thousands years to degrade so it's going to stay plastic pollution affects all sorts of life marine life terrestrial life yes animals plants microbes everyone is affected by the plastic it also affects us we have found plastic in all of our body parts recently just before two days there is a one paper which is saying that plastic is there in our eyes also so it has oh. penetrated that deep into our body you know plastic affects our economies our livelihoods lot of people they are depending on the plastic industry plastic is also affecting you know rather than it exacerbates our climate change exacerbates plastic pollution is probably a global pollution not a single country is affecting or is affected so we need is a collaborative action yes and collective action the, right. you know plastic pollution yeah i'm sure about that mm -hmm. 
Do you give us, can you give us some severe examples of the plastic pollution? Yeah, Very that, severe. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's what, uh, uh, the first one that anyone who is knowing this field, that, that, that will be the first example. And that is of the great Pacific garbage patch. Okay, so Pacific is the largest ocean. So there is an upper circle in the, you know, northern Pacific and same way there is a southern circle. So that's a current which is, you mm. know, flowing in the Pacific Ocean. And because of that, the, the whatsoever the plastic which is dumped into the ocean, Pacific Ocean, that is collected in the central part of these, you know, currents. And the northern patch has grown so big, it is about 1.6 million square kilometers so that is almost like uh, half of india or three times the size of the country france that big so i think that is the biggest example of plastic pollution then you will not find any marine creature hmm. which is not affected by plastic you may take surface dwellers or you may take fishes which can dwell at different you know, heights. Or you may take deep sea creatures. All of them are affected by plastic. And many of them, if you dissect, their stomach will be full of the so plastic. So they swallow that? Uh, yeah, they swallow. From the beaches? Yes. Yeah, the floating plastic. Basically. Floating plastic, right. Even in our remote area, I just gave you the example of this Mariana Trench. Yeah. Okay. So, Arctic and Antarctic region, even those remote islands, okay? So, everywhere you will find the plastic. So, there is no place on earth which is free from the plastic, mm -hmm. basically. Plastic is there in our rivers and in our water, you know, waterways. I will, uh, I want to cite that one example of the Sitaram River in the Indonesia. Hmm. That entire river is called plastic river. Everywhere plastic is floating. Oh. You, it's very hard to see the water now. Yeah. So that much, you know, plastic pollution is there. Uh, beaches, you know, Beach we are every day, you affected. know, seeing this report that this much of plastic is being cleared from this beach. I want to give you an example of. America. Yes. And in the America, I want to give you an example of Hawaii, which is considered the most beautiful loveliest place. place. Yeah, <laughs> loveliest place. There, there is a one beach, which is called Camilo Beach. Camilo Beach. That entire beach is called Plastic Beach because there is a, so much plastic pollution there. So this is the extent, and these are the you know some serious examples of the plastic pollution. <laughs> So plants are also affected by that? Yeah, plants are probably, we, do, we really, it's very, probably very hard to make it out that how plants are affected. But the recent research shows that plants also take up plastic, particularly those microplastics. Microplastics, right. Yeah, so plastic causes soil contamination and that is affecting the plants. Then, as I said, that some of the microplastic is being taken up by the plants. Uh, many of times, you know, some plastic bag is there in the soil. So that will hamper the growth of, you know, roots. So that's how it makes a physical kind of obstruction there. Habitat degradation is the one of the biggest problem of the plastic. The chemical leaching. So the plastic contains a lot of different chemicals. We will come to that point later also. Sure. So that is also one big problem. And ecological disruptions are also there. That also affects the plants. Yeah. So, what are the primary ways in which plastic pollution affects marine and terrestrial both life? Yeah, basically, the way plastic affects organism is probably similar. Hmm. Uh, the main problem comes with the ingestion. So, the many different organisms, including the microorganisms, phytoplanktons, invertebrates, feces, turtles. Turtles are a very serious problem. We'll come to that point. Seabirds, mm. whales, okay? Then they all ingest plastic. Uh, that, there are many reasons for that. 
terrestrial animals, cow. I want to cite that particular example. Just before a few days, we were at a gau sala in the Viramdam. So uh, they are collecting, you know, the cows which are unhealthy. Mm. So they will take it to that gau sala and then they treat them. So many of them dies and uh, their, you know, bodies are left for the other animals to, you know, take up. So we visited that site because that is the site where lots of vulture comes and uh, we do some research on the vulture. So when I went there, I found that there are mounds of plastic, small, small, okay? And just near that skeleton of the cow. Mm. So I simply asked that caretaker, why this so many plastic mounds are there? And you know what answer he gave? I was literally crying at that place that these are, this is the plastic which has come out from the dead cow. So Stomach this much big bit. mound of, you know, plastic, almost more than two kilograms of it's shocking, plastic really. from each cow. Yeah. So that's that how, you know, it affects the terrestrial life also. Besides cow, many wild animals, they also feed on plastic, mystically. Because we have this habit of packing the you know food in the plastic and then we are dumping it outside. So, so the animals cannot open up and they simply imbibe. So bears are also very much affected by the plastic. The monkeys, they sometimes also mistake and they take up the plastic. Another very big problem which is exerted by the plastic is by entanglement. Mm. So the, we are disposing the fishing gears, particularly the nets, in the ocean, on the beaches and at several different places. So there, the animals, they get trapped. Particularly the animal which gets trapped is turtle. Mm -hmm. There are lots of videos on the YouTube, you will find that turtles are very badly trapped. Actually, what happens that turtle, you know, that floating fishing net, the turtles, they identify it like, uh, you know, uh, jellyfish, which is their food, actually. So they mm. imbibe the plastic and then they get, in you know, entangled. So it's very hard to take out that plastic now because it has penetrated very deep in its body as well as has gone very deep into its digestive tract. So those are really very difficult, you know, scenes to see, in fact. Whales are affected by plastic like anything. Because all these baleen whales, you know, baleen means their teeth, they get modified into a baleen. So they are basically a filter feeder. So wherever there is a school of fish or plankton, so they will go and simply they open up their mouth and then they close. So along with the feces and planktons and all that, plastic also goes into Inside. their body and then it accumulates in and it causes a lot of different problems. Habitat damage, we are already aware of particularly in the marine, you know, ecosystem, it affects a lot, particularly to the coral reefs and beaches, rocks, plants, barriers. It affects the drainage pattern in the ocean system like that. So many effects are there. Habitat alteration because of plastic, the entire habitat gets changed and chemical contamination. So this is a one very severe problem in fact, because plastic is not simply, you know, basically what is plastic? Plastic is nothing but a polymer. Polymer. So, to obtain a desired characteristic, they, you know, a lot of different chemicals are added into it, which are called plasticizers and a lot of other dyes are used and a lot of different chemicals. So, these chemicals are very harmful mm. and they simply leach into the water and cause the pollution. One of the chemical is bisphenol A. So if you know, so the, you know, the people are recommending that whatsoever the plastic that we use in our daily life, like plastic containers and, you know, they should be free from this chemical because it's very harmful. So that's why in many plastic, it is written that this is, you know, uh, safe for food because it is BPA free. So this, this is that bisphenol A. So, but it is used in other plastic and it is being leaching and that 
we can take care of but what about the animals and the plants and lots of other you know things phthalates are also used as a plasticizer and they are also very mm. harmful and several other chemicals dyes are there which is harmful harmful so uh, about the plastic pollution how, what are the consequences once the animal swallows that or what we can say is getting entangled in the plastic debris or something yeah uh, when animal gets entangled you know there is a physical harm first of all okay so there will be a cuts in their neck some vital parts their limbs so it's actually penetrating very deep inside and these wounds are very dangerous in fact to that animal so that is the physical harm there is a strangulation various types uh, because of this entanglement there is a difficulty in the movement and the feeding uh, there is a psychological stress because you know something is attached to your body you know and then you are moving it's not easy movement so a psychological stress is there uh, it uh, also hinders their reproductive you know behavior so their uh, you know uh, reproductive success also gets reduced and uh, of course because of these you know effects mm -hmm. uh, they becomes you know easy prey okay so that's a one big problem because of that the plastic gets transferred to the neck you know trophic level and then there is a ecological effect how does the plastic pollution disrupt the marine ecosystems and the food chains yeah just so just i said that how does you know yeah. it gets transferred to the next yes, cycle yes yes so uh, the same thing like physical harm ingestion Mm. habitat destruction is there the pollution is being created by the plastic uh, besides that plastic becomes a medium for the spread of the invasive species so because plastic you know floats mm. so certain organisms they get attached on the plastic and they they have got trans yeah, you know now transferred to all different parts of the world and uh, the, this uh, you know as i said that uh, there is a uh, north pacific garbage trench plastic garbage trench there we have found that a different sets of organisms are going there hmm. okay so it becomes a different type of habitat which is not natural so that's what it is you know disturbing besides that it you know entirely affects the nutrient cycle in the ecosystem and you know being transferred from one trophic level to other trophic level that also impacts the food chains and food webs in the ecosystem do birds also mistake plastic items for food and what are their consequences yeah so birds are very you know very much affected by the plastic uh, this is because that plastic you know which is floating on the surface resembles you know to their food pellet basically and they are brightly colored so that's why the bird gets attracted to it so then you know they simply you know uh, they feed on it not only that the birds take these plastic pieces and they feed these to their chicks oh. and uh, uh, recently there is a one study on one island and they found lot of chicks died and at that at each of that place okay that lot of plastic was there in the each of that chick body the dead chick body so that is the extent you know uh, it affects the birds then uh, how it affects the bird is so when it goes into the body it is not been digested so because of that it causes abrasion in its you know elementary canal and finally it causes perforations so the elementary canals will have a perforations and because of that all that digestive material enters into the body and sometimes it causes blockage so the food cannot progress further and because of that the bird gets severely malnutrition and toxicity of course and finally it leads to starvation and death yes. of the birds they die yeah recently uh, i was watching 
a film on the you know uh, pelican which was affected by the plastic so they did a lot of hard work in removing that plastic threads from its you know stomach uh, which of the wildlife are most affected by this plastic well it is very hard to say that which you know which wildlife <laughs> uh, i would say because plastic is there everywhere in our ocean so it is predicted predicted that marine life is the one which is most affected by okay. the plastic pollution besides that sea turtles they are very much affected by the plastic sea birds but their faces are so small how can they digest no it? turtles can be very big just like yeah. a car so okay. they get entangled in the fishing nets that we have discarded hmm. sea birds also affected because they their legs get trapped in those fishing gears and then they are unable to make themselves free just like what we see when you know in this kite threads or uh, this local birds they get you know trapped yeah. so same way okay so fishes also get trapped so birds also are affected waders particularly uh one thing we really don't know much about is the invertebrates that how plastic affects lots of invertebrates particularly the crustaceans and the mollusks so uh, you know in this uh, area a lot of study is desirable right now so marine uh, animals are yeah, most they affected are, i think uh, would be the most affected yeah. oh. of effects of this uh, plastic on biodiversity uh yes so because it is affecting at a individual level and some species they are imbibing more plastic or they are affected by more plastic than others then yes they will affect the biodiversity also so this is basically because of the direct mortality due to plastic then uh, you know a particular population you know will face the decline there is a habitat uh, you know degradation toxicity now what will happen that when the plastic gets transferred from one trophic level to the second trophic level its level will increase so that is known as the bio accumulation and uh, because as i said that uh, there is a spread of invasive species due to plastic uh, and uh, because certain population are affected more than the others so what will happen that it will cause genetic and evolutionary changes also because you know there is a selection select selection forces which is working at you know such event yes. the most important point today what is microplastic yeah microplastic is the plastic fragments which we cannot see basically mm. so means they are less than 5 mm in size so not at all visible yeah 5 mm the human eye it will be difficult yeah. to distinguish okay so uh, there are two main sources of this microplastic one is called the primary source so we are producing actually this kind of plastic like there are a lot of some nano formulations hmm. which is using plastic material then we are using lots of beads for various industrial processes so they are also in a microplastic form and uh, you know after their use they are simply discarded so they will end up in our mm. environment and there is a secondary source so secondary source is probably more important so we are discarding the plastic so that plastic undergoes wear and tear due to lot of different you know natural processes like sunlight waves wind okay so because of that they are always in a abrasion and they are releasing small small particles which are in a form of a microplastic so these microplastics is a very big problem due to you know many reasons the most important reason is this that uh, this cannot be distinguished so that's why it is easily ingested mm. okay so all sorts of organism they ingest as i said to you that even in our eyes there is a microplastic even we are also ingesting we are drinking this mineral water bottle each of that bottle has more than 500 microplastic particles oh. so every it is there everywhere okay 
Uh, so it affects each and every organism, fish, birds, marine animals, terrestrial animals, plants, and even us. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, potential health, health risks because of these plastics and we have just started understanding that how it affects us. So lots of digestive problems are there, nutrient uptake is affected, bioaccumulation is there and they persist for a very long time in our, our environment and basically it is a global problem and therefore it needs is a global solution also. Yeah. Do you think uh, in future um, organic plastic will be invented or so? Yeah, uh, we'll come to that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So what are the lesser uh, known impacts of the microplastic on animals? Yeah. <laughs> it depends on which plastic means microplastic it is. It is also depend on the species and uh, of course the environment where they are staying. So they are ingesting, as I said, so because of that, it will accumulate in their environment, digestive tract, and then it goes to the various parts of their body and can affect various organs, including, you know, plast microplastic is, recent study has shown that microplastic can affect our heart also. Mm. Okay. It's detected up to our eyes. So it is there everywhere in our body, mm -hmm. but uh, it may affect, you know, functioning of some of our vital organs. It causes toxicity. Now, microplastic is very important in toxicity study because microplastic has a very huge surface area because they are, you know, nanomaterial, micromaterial. Mm -hmm. So their surface area is very huge. So because of that, they absorb certain chemicals like heavy metals and uh, even these forever chemicals, you know, polyfluorinated uh, carbons, okay? So they all are absorbed and then they are released also. So in that way, they are kind of, uh, you know, affecting our body as a toxicant also. Uh, it has a lot of uh, physiological effect. Our digestive system is the most affected. Even it affects our behavior, uh, cause bioaccumulation and biomagnification, as I said earlier. Now, can you please explain the phenomenon of the bioaccumulation and its relationship to the plastic pollution in animals? Yeah, I just said that the microplastic is a very huge surface area. So because of that, they are able to absorb a lot of different chemicals, pollutants, heavy metals. Okay, so this has been ingested by, you know, say plants, mm. from plants, you know, it will go to the, uh, you know, the first uh, animals like herbivores, then it will go to the carnivores. So in each of these steps, the, the amount of plastic, microplastic in their body will increase. That process is called the bioaccumulation. And this will affect so these effects will get magnified. So that is called the biomagnification. So in this way, the microplastic has a very severe effect on the different animals. So they may directly not eating the plastic, but then also they will have a effect. So a lot of consequences yeah. are there. As I said, that it is toxic and it is delivering the toxic. Now one more, you know, word have come here. That is called the Trojan horse effect of microplastic. Mm -hmm. So you know Trojan horse, so that Greeks, you know, to yeah. to to win the battles against the Troy, you know, those all. So the same way, what microplastic does, that it will accumulate the pollutants mm -hmm. from one place, and they will get drifted because of a lot of different natural phenomena, and there it will affect. So actually those areas are not producing microplastic, but they will see the effect. So these kind of effects are called the Trojan horse effects. So because so it enters into one trophic level, then it will, you know, affects the entire food chain and food web like that. So what are the innovative solutions being proposed by you 
to mitigate this impact of plastic on animals life yeah see plastic is such a material that we can't avoid i don't think that we can avoid plastic no alternative for so, that so no alternatives are there but it's very hard because it is there everywhere so we should try to replace this plastic with some biodegradable forms so we are in a process of inventing lot of biodegradable plastics we in fact have invented but uh, those plastics are still not suitable for mass production and mass adoption by different people but i think it will come then so these bio based plastics are one very important you know invention which is going on right now another one is the plastic eating enzymes okay so we are in search of plastic eating enzymes so various different types of organisms like bacteria basically so this plastic is a polymer just like wood wood so why we make furniture from the wood because there are very or very less organism which can digest the wood and you know termite can eat mm. the wood so mm. actually termite cannot digest the wood so there is a protozoan are there and the further there are bacteria so these protozoans called trichonympha actually that is the source of the cellulase enzyme which is actually digesting it mm. so we have invented lot of different bacteria we have invented even the insects and their maggots and larvas which can feed on the plastic but not at that level as we desire but uh, that invention is further going on and we are using you know genetically modified bacteria for this purpose and lot of research is being conducted right now so besides that lot of marine debris collection projects are going on even as i said that mariana you know this uh, uh, yeah not uh, Pacific, uh, yes. you know, plastic trash, you know, island. So uh, we are, you know, there is a treaty going on, and they want to remove this plastic, and somehow, you know, this uh, uh, remove it. So that kind of effects are going on. Lot of beaches is being cleaned up from the plastic pollution, and lot of areas are also being cleaned up from the plastic pollution. and all these plastics are then converted into you know into you know kind of bricks which we can use it for the household construction it even is better than the uh, you know this uh, clay or soil be you know bricks then uh, we have made the roads which is made up of plastics so we are finding a new way of you know using the plastic for different purposes uh their need is a education and awareness campaign okay so lot of different governmental and non governmental organizing are organizations they are advertising that we should you know not use much of the you know as much as we should avoid the avoid use of the plastic like we are not using plastic means we always try to avoid using plastic for more than 20 years mm. then uh, like whenever we are we have a desire to get the food from outside i uh, we have a stainless steel you know uh, dabbas <laughs> so uh, i will get my food in that on that only because if you power a very hot food into that plastic bag or into the plastic boxes a lot of microplastic is been released and you know i just explain how harmful it is it is so, cancerous also yeah right? so it it is you know every person has to take their own responsibility initiative right we are taking our students to various different uh, sanctuaries and national parks so we are dedicating some of our students that you will have to collect the plastic so in that way we are collecting big big you know bags of the plastic and we will take it out to the you know our sanctuaries and you know uh, wildlife areas so so this kind of education and awareness campaign so are nice very work. very important yeah government also have to do uh, its own role like uh, you know defining their policy and the regulation 
and uh, recently it has been suggested that we need to have a circular economy initiative where we have to you know do a transition you know which aims to minimize the waste and maximize the recycling Perfect. so that will help you know uh, in reducing the use of the plastic what uh, strategies you recommend to be implemented to reduce the plastic pollution and its impact on terrestrial animals and wildlife too yeah so uh, i will suggest is this three words that is reduce reuse yes and recycle perfect so this is the biggest uh, you know possible solution for the plastics best slogan yeah. also yeah so okay. then uh, we should uh, you know reduce the use of the single use plastics and the government has also implemented its policy for this so uh, besides these you know uh, those you know producer responsibility so who are producing the plastics mm. so they should also be given some of the responsibility of the you know cleaning up of the plastic and recycling the plastics uh, then uh, you know packaging industry is the one which is using the maximum amount of the plastics so there we need to have a innovative packaging solutions where we can reduce the use of the plastic and uh, uh, this big corporate houses they should be given some kind of responsibilities like uh, they make you know public aware of you know not using much of the plastics and for the clean up of the plastics from our various different you know places public places okay wildlife areas agriculture fields so uh, that is also desirable rather than we just saying that don't throw the plastic okay so the use of uh, you know dust bins and all this is very much desirable so that what we need to do it so so we should all pledge today yeah. to control the use of the plastics as right? much as we can yes <laughs> and it begins from that person itself from, from us also. from us <laughs> as we draw near the end of our interview session i want to express my sincere appreciation to each and every one of you both our esteemed guest and our dedicated audience for your active participation and insightful contributions in the battle between the planet and plastic there can only be one victor and with our collective efforts let it be planet yes once again i extend my heartfelt gratitude to mr kaid johar for his invaluable contributions and unwavering commitment to the pursuit of knowledge and excellence thank you very much thank you so much <laughs>